Hi, my name is Jonathan Rotz, field agronomist with Pioneer, and today I want to talk with you about, well, no, I don't want to talk with you about, but I'm going to talk with you about my biggest headache right now, slugs. All right, so in the area that I cover, slugs have been a huge issue for us this year. Let's go over a couple things about them. First off, what is a slug? A slug, as you can see here, is just one of these little guys, and it's a mollusk, right? So this is one of the biggest problems that we have. It's a mollusk, so our traditional insecticides, whether that be seed treatment, uh, over-the-top applications or whatever, will not have any effect on these guys. How do we tell slugs are there? Well, you see stripping on our leaves, such as here, or, you know, some guys, if they're coming around scouting, they thought fields were good, and there's pockets of their field, or large areas even, that aren't even there. You start to pull trash back, you dig down, you find slugs. Secondly, though, why are slugs such a big issue this year? I think it comes back to multiple things. First off, let's think about the winter. In the area that I cover, we had a pretty mild winter. We had one severe week of cold temperatures, but during that week, we had snow cover and our frost really didn't go far into the ground. Other than that, we had a pretty mild and open winter, allowing adults to overwinter. We also had a very warm period, kind of in the beginning to middle of March. Slugs need about 40 degrees to become active, and even at that point in time, we may even have some eggs that'll hatch. So. It's reasonable to think that we had some of our slugs hatch back in that March period. We could find slugs all winter, but then we get our second generation starting early. Take this and fast forward into April, and we had some wonderful warm temperatures, our soils were warm, and that gave that population time to go again, time to increase, time to get moving. And then the third thing that happened was in May, we had a cold period, a regression of temperatures. Now, when we think about how to get a crop ahead of slugs, one of the number one things that we want to do is have our biomass accumulate quicker than those slugs can actually consume it. This year, we had a large population of slugs coming in to our growing season, and those slugs were feeding on our crop, and then that crop, when it was small, still had this regression of temperatures and slowed down, and in many areas, we had overwhelming populations that would actually take out or at least significantly hinder our stands. Now, what do we do about slugs and, and where do we find them and what do we look for? This is one of the most frustrating things about slugs is there's no single thing to say that this is going to be a field that is, you know, the highest probability of having an issue. Soybeans tend to have some of the worst issues because again, they are lifting those cotyledons out, their growing point is exposed, and as soon as a slug does something and feeds, especially if it feeds on that stem as it's starting to lift and snaps that head, we're going to eliminate that plant. Corn, on the other hand, since the growing point is below, it'll continue to fight, continue to try to put out new leaves. The other thing to consider is folks can say, well, cover crops, no cover crops, all these different things, how do I still have slugs regardless? One thing we have to remember about slugs is they're an omnivore, kind of like you and I. They're not simply uh, going, to plant, going to feed on plant material. They can feed on small insects, funguses, all sorts of other things in order to sustain themselves. So they don't necessarily have to have plant material to survive, but when the plant material is uh, present, a lot of times, depending on the plant material, that is their preference. So lastly, what do I do now? You know, we're standing here, it's the beginning of June, and the number one thing that everybody says is, well, it gets hot, it's just gonna, it's going, the problem's gonna go away. Not necessarily. Again, if we're accumulating enough biomass on our plants and they're ahead of the slugs, great. But we still have some replants, we even still have some crops, even like double crop soybeans and things that are gonna go into the ground. And it comes back to our typical things, we need to continue to scout. If you have high populations of slugs and you're replanting into that field, again, that small germinating seedling may have a lot of struggle getting out of them in front of those slugs. The only two ways to get rid of slugs is to bait with a molluscicide, something like deadline pellets, or to do uh, tillage, and, and not just something like a vertical tillage, but something of full disturbance. 
So even as we go forward here, especially when we have lots of vegetation, lots of places for those guys to hide everything else, I still continue to tell guys, don't just turn a blind eye on it. Keep on scouting those fields, keep on looking because the populations that we have out there, especially in those problematic fields, are high enough that without treatment, it could continue to give us headaches, especially as we're planting more and more crops here, uh, thinking about double crop and such. With that, I hope you found this interesting and insightful. If you have any more questions on this or other agronomic topics, feel free to reach out to myself, your Pioneer sales rep, or anyone else. Have a safe and a great growing season. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.